All right. Welcome back, guys. Um, we are now behind the scenes for our bonus reel footage. Um, had great conversations uh, on our topic here today, but obviously didn't get through everything we wanted to. So, Conrad, why don't you ground us back to uh, where we want to go with this, this next set of conversations? Well, I, I, I want to do a start with a big picture topic here on, on mega trends and what there, there's so much going on under this AI and machine learning. Um, header. So uh, maybe you guys could expand on what do you, what are the trends that get you the most excited? Who wants to get started on that? Sergey, you want to start? Yeah, sure. So uh, among the many trends that are promising, if applied in the correct context in the right way, I would like to uh, quickly allude to two of them. So one is that if we go back to the uh, classical ISA 95 paradigm, we notice that it is becoming less hierarchical and there is a lot of connectivity happening across layers. So things get more dynamic and interesting there, opening a whole lot of new opportunities. Uh, a good example of that is that uh, with powerful edge computing, there is some level of analytics, uh, even including basic AI and ML, that can be performed at the very end, at the very edge, because uh, hardware and connectivity already support that to some extent. So this is one mega trend that will cause a lot of disruption and by doing so, creating many opportunities. The other big mega trend that uh, has been there for a longer while is open source. Uh, open source has been uh, curated and improved uh, at an astonishing pace and it will be uh, uh, really uh, defeating the purpose not to try to leverage everything that the open source community is doing for many fields of knowledge and with a humongous concentration on AI and ML. So a lot of high quality, low cost and supported solutions are out there to be harvested. Yeah, so just a quick question on that. I heard a while ago that um, there are really not a huge number of um, you know, deep learning algorithms or AI algorithms or whatever, that, that there are, you know, a handful, maybe a dozen, I don't know what the number is nowadays, of openly available open source algorithms that people can freely grab and then take and deploy into their types of environment. Is that still true today or is every time somebody um, goes to learn something new, they have to create their own algorithm or wait for it to be developed? Yeah, so that is kind of the beauty of the open source community. It's, it's both. Uh, there is a lot of ready to go material that you can leverage with uh, very few tweaks. And uh, point in case, I, I want to enter into details, but uh, one of my latest assignments was solved, getting a paper that was published in the corresponding, with the corresponding code in December 24, 2019. So it was kind of a Christmas gift. And you have a paper explaining it step by step. You have the accompanying code and you, hmm, how can I use this to my particular problem? And you tweak that a little bit and, 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 and there you are. Uh, do you want to start that from scratch? Because your uh, problem is very specific. Uh, yes, uh, that, that's also an option. And uh, just be careful with what is your strategy there. By doing so, would you like to retain your IP proprietary? Or would you like to give back to the, to the community where the open source resides? There is no right or wrong. There is just something that is more aligned or less aligned with each company's strategy. Mm -hmm. Maybe Haresh, you could elaborate on, on because this is part of Sesame's strategy, right? Um, to uh, crowdsource um, some of these algorithms and models in, into the platform. So maybe you can elaborate on that. Yeah, yeah and, and I think Sergio is exactly right. I think that there's a ton of uh, very useful and powerful techniques that have been captured in, in open source. But, you know, like anything that, that is quote unquote free, you got to make sure that you're packaging it in the right way for your purposes, right? So in, in Sesame's case, for example, we would have access to these open source uh, uh, codes and, and, uh, and, and tools but in order for that to work seamlessly in a platform, maybe there's another step involved, a step that is enabled by what we are creating within the platform. For instance, we talked about how important it is to have the data already structured so that you're not struggling with that before you feed it into these tools, right? 
Well, so within within Sesame's platform, we have a, a concept around creating information models. We are calling them SM profiles mm -hmm. that are already capturing the context for that process, that, that piece of equipment, perhaps even that use case. And once that is done, now you can take an open source algorithm and somehow have an interface, an API, which is also something that we are creating for those profiles. But that API then helps connect back into any open source code that is now packaged to work with that API. So that piece may still have to be done, but it's a small percentage of the work, right? Relatively, because you don't have to recreate any of those those deep mathematical algorithms that some expert has already created and put it out in open source. So when you explore the, the platform and these profiles, you're learning not just what, what data is required, but what other additional context data is required for these kind of problems. It's, it's all kind of wrapped into this profile definition. Right? Exactly, and it, it, it's expandable, right? Extensible mm -hmm. uh, is how uh, you know, our, our VP of technology puts it but extensible in the sense that as you start using those structured models and you start bringing in more applications, whether they are open source or, or commercial, you start expanding the context in that profile. So not everybody has to use everything. You can always do a building block type of an approach, but, but it helps um, uh, take out a lot of the burden that some of these advanced tools uh, may otherwise face in terms of putting the data in the right right form so does does that allow for scalability right i mean does, is that i mean when i look at ai today generally speaking um in the in the outside the industrial world um it's happening all the time right my phone's getting smarter my apps are you know pushing things to me before i know they need me so I'm consuming AI constantly, but I'm not doing any projects. I'm not going out and buying anything specifically for an end state that is AI. So you know, are we going to see that happening in manufacturing? And is, is it truly scalable? And, and are these, um, you know, these, these profiles and this approach that you're talking about, is that integral to uh, allowing it to scale? So I'll do a couple of things on that question. I'll split it into two first. <laughs> I'll take one part and I think Sergio can comment on the second part and here's why uh, that's important. The first part is that I think for scalability, it has two sides, right? One is that how are you going to structure the information that is being fed and the information that is being derived out of these tools and then make use of that information, right? That's one piece. And the second piece is around the mathematical structure that's in that algorithm. So how do you take that and scale it up? Can I use it for a single drill press versus a, a significantly wider um, you know, array of, of uh, processes? So I'll, I'll let Sergio comment on that piece for the, for the algorithm. But going back to the first one, again, I think if you have to do something scalable in terms of the amount of information that you're gonna be dealing with, you have to have some structured way of doing that. And that's why having something like SM profiles in the, pro, in the platform or some sort of a structured information model that allows you to connect applications together as you're consuming this information becomes very, very critical in addition to the connectivity piece, right? So Sergio, if you want to maybe comment on the scalability of some of these uh, tools and algorithms. Yeah, and on the algorithmic side, by way of inspiration, let me please also uh, slice that into two halves, right? And we can <laughs> keep going here. But uh, I think that one aspect is the scale up, which is uh, more of the same in a much larger volume. And then you, you need to have uh, ways to pursue wise choices of algorithms. If you have something extremely powerful, such as Markov chain Monte Carlo, uh, which is inherently an expensive algorithm and is difficult to parallelize, uh, then you, you may want to uh, really set expectations realistically depending on the amount of uh, budget that you have to increase the infrastructure and how you're going to go about that. Uh, other methods, they, they are highly scalable in the sense of increasing volume, but then you need to be careful with the other half, which is how you scale out, which is not necessarily increasing the volume, but uh, increasing the portfolio of applications that are served by AI and ML. 
And for that, uh, benchmarking with known problems, problems whose solutions are known, both because they are public benchmarks or they are benchmarks that your company also has, uh, that is extremely important. And that is not only for AI and NML. Uh, every single component in the smart manufacturing ecosystem would tremendously benefit if you have a thorough policy for verification and validation, which is performing earlier smaller scale experiments that you compare against benchmarks whose solutions you know. And from there, you gain more comfort and confidence to apply that to novel fields. Excellent. It must have been a good question if we were able to split it into four separate questions in response. So uh, <laughs> that's good. Um, I've completely lost track of how long we've been going here, guys. I know we've talked about megatrends. We've talked about open source technologies, optimi optimization, um, you know, the value, the pitfalls, et cetera. Uh, anything else that's critical? I think we, we wanted to talk about big data. And we've been doing big data for a long time, and we've talked a lot about structured data today. So is, is there a, a place for unstructured data? I mean, some people, when, when the big data hype started, everybody thought, we don't need to structure anything anymore. Right. But, may, but maybe things are swinging too much the other way. Maybe you guys can provide some clarity there. Yeah, I, I think I'll, uh, I'll, I'll make a comment and then let, let Sergio fill in because you know, when, when, so in my, you know, 30 years of manufacturing, uh, uh, you know, obviously the volume of data has grown, right? I mean, we've got sensors everywhere. We, we have the need to know what's going on at a much higher scale than we did before. So, so the volume is certainly there, but that's not necessarily the uh, problem or the challenge as far as manufacturers are concerned. I think the problem is more around how do you handle the complexity of the data? So the data may come from your process, it may come from your machine, it may come from your product, it may come from the, the human workforce that you have on the floor, it may come from the environment. Um, how do you put something like that together to, to make any sense, right? That's the challenge. And so the more structure you provide at the, at the most basic levels from where you can build up, the better off you'll be. And then you can deal with the volume. Right. So that would be my my reaction to that question. Now, this is a very, very interesting conversation with a potential to become endless. So I'm trying to, to package uh, a few important points here. So one is that uh, all data before it is usable for its fullest extent and potential benefit, it has to become structured. At the source, perhaps there is no structure. And then a big deal in the design of uh, an overarching machine learning and AI strategy and infrastructure is how do you will convert raw data into structured data such that you can squeeze its fullest potential. So, so that, that is one point that I wanted to touch upon. And the system like Sesame's uh, platform uh, is really pivotal in order to help practitioners uh, uh, doing that in an efficient way. The second part is about big versus non-big data. Uh, a good way to go about that is to recall the so-called four Vs of data that some authors call six Vs and, and even 10 Vs. I'll, I'll, I'll stick to the simplest form, which is four Vs. Volume, that speaks to big data. Mm -hmm. Velocity, variety, and veracity. So is there a way to create the data such that you believe in the data that you see? Are you fast enough such that the data that you're trying to understand is still actionable? And in terms of the variety, that connects directly to the complexity that uh, uh, Harash mentioned, because all the way from single scalers to complex movies and infrared cameras, there is a huge variety there, and the ecosystems have to, uh, in some way or form, handle all of them. And to kind of wrap all of these points together, uh, how to really go that uh, when the rubber hits the road? So let's get very tactical here. Uh, one thing is to have a good design, and whenever we're designing anything that is complex, systems thinking tends to help a lot. I would refer uh, interested parties to go to incos.org, I-N-C-O-S-E.org. That is the International Council of Systems Engineering. If you want to really uh, peel a very complex onion and make it work in the end, that's a good place to start, and I believe that that applies to AI and ML in the context of smart manufacturing and others. Excellent. Excellent. Um, so, anything else, Conrad? Well, I, I wanted to make sure, I mean, some, some people out there 
I'd be looking at this and, and being a little overwhelmed by the to topic. So I was wondering if Sergio had a few pointers for where to get started. Is, is there a logical sequence to getting started or is it more like whatever your low hanging fruit is or wherever your, wherever your pain is, what, what are your suggestions for people? Yeah, so all of the above, because uh, each context is very particular, but uh, generally speaking, I would start from the end and go backwards such that you are able to trace what steps are critical and uh, which are the forks in the road that you need to be wise in, in choosing them. So why starting with the end as a goal? Uh, that is the requirements determination exercise that is is good part of, of any design of any complex system. And then by, by walking backwards, you can trace, okay, uh, in month 10 in of my journey, I need to have this much infrastructure of open source, and I need to have a vendor to support this. And in order for that to happen, by month three, I need to uh, perhaps launch a few proof of concept that are trying to target my low-hanging fruit, because they will not only help me uh, understand the path for, forward better, but to uh, increase the buy-in that we have from the various stakeholders that are investing on all of these with uh, typically very high expectations. Start with the why. Start with the why. Thank you. Sounds like good advice all the way around. Well, gentlemen, um, I, I, I think this has been just fantastic um, and we could continue to go on, but we should probably draw this to a close. Um, and, and as we mentioned before, I know you're going to have more conversations, Haresh, with Sergio. You're gonna have some tech talks that, that go deeper in this area. So folks will get more um, and probably more interactive than we've been able to provide here today. But I, I thought it was fantastic. And um, uh, thank you. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. Glad to be here. Much thank appreciated. You. Thank you. Okay. Any, any parting words, Conrad, or should we just shut her down? No, just keep the conversation going on LinkedIn and our community uh, and, and catch up with our prior episodes. Yes. All right. Well, we appreciate that. Thanks, everybody. Take care, right. gentlemen. Everybody have a great day.